I'm Rebecca Fryer with Kingstonist News. Here's what's making headlines today, October 28, 2022. Kingston police have released images of a suspect wanted for an assault at a business in Kingston's West End. Police say the man attended a business on Gardner's Road on Thursday, October 13th, and allegedly made employees feel very uncomfortable with rude, aggressive, and inappropriate behavior and remarks. Police say the man then returned to the store the following day on October 14th, around 7.30 p.m., and without provocation, assaulted one of the employees before fleeing the store. Kingston police described the suspect as white, male, approximately 40 to 45 years of age, clean shaven with a slim build and slicked back short black hair. He may also go by the name Roberto. Police ask anyone with information on this incident or the suspect to contact them. A reminder that tips can be provided anonymously by calling the Kingston police general number and simply asking to remain anonymous. A COVID-19 outbreak has been declared at Joyceville Institution after more than 20 inmates tested positive for the virus, according to the Correctional Service of Canada. As such, regularly scheduled visits at the institution may be affected. Kingston's municipal election happened Monday, October 24th and produced some close races throughout the city. However, no race was as tight as the one in Loyalist Canaraqua District, where Paul Chavez defeated Jackie Collier by just 35 votes. And of course, the closeness of that contest has prompted Collier to issue a statement that her team has requested a recount with the city's elections office. However, it's not clear if she's going to get that, as it is according to a press release from the city, a recount is only guaranteed in case Cases where there is a tie between candidates. There are other instances, though, where a recount may be requested, but this process isn't as simple as just asking the city to count again. It actually requires an application to the Superior Court of Justice and may cost Collier up to $7,000 in out-of-pocket legal expenses. You can read more about this developing story right now at Kingstonist.com. On Wednesday, Habitat for Humanity Kingston Limestone Region officially welcomed two families to their new habitat homes with a special celebration. These new townhomes will provide stability and security for these families through Habitat's affordable home ownership program, which allows families the opportunity to purchase a safe and decent home through some unique financing partnerships. And lastly, well, the cookies might not be smiling anymore until next year. The continued success of Tim Horton's Smile Cookie campaign is undeniable as they once again smashed this year's fundraising goal, raising nearly $193,000 for the neonatal intensive care unit at KGH. The campaign ran for a week from September 19th to the 25th with all proceeds from the sales of the beloved chocolate chip cookies being donated directly to the NICU to help fund programs and to purchase specialized equipment. For more on these stories and other headlines, or to submit your own news, visit kingstonist.com and become a subscriber today. I'm Rebecca Fryer. Have a great one, Kingston.